The Many Adventures of Iron Dad and Spider Son by LBI Greyhound 13. Chapter 23 In Each Other's Corners, Part 2. This is the last chapter, guys. Thankfully, the elevator came right away after Happy pressed the button, and they were able to get in before the producer could catch up to them. Peter had stopped retching, but still looked pretty sick. It wasn't long before they finally reached the first floor, and the five of them made their way out of the building to the car parked in the parking garage not too far from the studio. Tony couldn't help but thank every deity he could think of that they were in New York City, and people didn't seem to care that Tony Stark was walking among them with his bodyguard, his fiancée, and the CEO of his company, a teenage boy, and said teenage boy's aunt. At least not until the reason why it would be on the news that day. However, he pushed that out of his head and focused on Peter and Peter alone. He needed them right now. Okay, buddy, we're going to get you home. Tony said as Happy ran ahead to get the keys to the car from the parking garage tooth. Yes, May began, and then you can get out of that suit and into your pyjamas and more importantly, into bed. She said, then looked at Tony. Tony, do you think you can give her down a call? Maybe she can make a house call in case this is serious. Absolutely, I'll call once we're in the car. Tony replied. And then we'll watch any movie you want, kid. Hey, it could be Disney for all I care. Okay, Mr. Stark, Peter replied weakly. The four of them waited no longer as Happy finally drove the car over to them, allowing them to get in. Tony and May sat in the back with Peter in the middle, while Pepper sat up front with Happy. The four head of security wasted no time in driving off towards Queens, and it didn't take long for the other three adults to realise that Happy was smiling as they drove through the streets of Manhattan. Before either of them could ask why, Peter sat up straight, with a smile of his own. Peter took a deep breath and replied, Well, that was a success, he said simply, with a smile never leaving his face. Not a success for my clothes, Happy retorted. Next time, warn me before you do that. Hey, Peter replied, shrugging. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Tony looked at May and then at Pepper, only to see that they too had confused looks on their faces, while Peter and Happy were smirking at each other in the rearview mirror. At least May and Pepper were confused too, so that meant the billionaire felt a little bit better. He turned to Peter. I think I speak for my fiancé and your aunt when I say, What the hell is going on? They were all more confused and Peter suddenly laughed. Mr Stark, I'm not sick. He said, I faked it. What? May asked incredulously. Yeah, Happy helped. Peter said with a confident smile on his face. What? Peppa asked as she looked at Peter and then at Happy. Sure did. Happy replied as he threw his hat over his shoulder and allowing Peter to give him a high five while they both smirked. And aside from my clothes, it was fun. So you're telling me that all of that was fake? Tony asked. He wasn't mad, and he could tell that me and Pepper weren't either. He then turned to Peter. What about the, uh, vomit? Happy's clothes were ruined by it with a stain, and there was a puddle on the floor next to Peter when he, they found him in the green room. I mixed some food together in the green room and dumped it on Happy and the floor, Peter replied with a smirk and never leaving his face. Had to make it look as real as possible. Thank God you guys didn't check his temperature, Happy said with his own smile. But damn, kid, you really sold it to the cheap suits. You should be an actor. Normally, I wouldn't condone this, May said as she wrapped an arm around Peter's shoulders. But I am so proud of you. She then gave him a kiss on the cheek. Thanks, I think, Peter replied, furrowing his eyebrows together. But I don't understand. Why? Tony asked, getting Peter to look at him. He was truly confused. Why would Peter fake being sick? The teenage boy already had his interview, and he was amazing. Tony was the one who was being interrogated. Why did Peter take matters into his own hands in that moment? He was so confused that he barely missed the knowing look May and Peppa were giving each other. Peter's smile softened as he looked at his mentor. Because the way she was treating you was horrible, Mr. Stark, he replied. She wasn't being professional at all. May and Miss Potts tried to say something, but the producer lady wasn't going to do anything to stop it. 
so I figured that if I pretended to be sick, it would be the perfect excuse for you to get out of there. Tony smiled as he looked at me and Papa, who wore smiles of their own, and then back at Peter. His smile widened. You sly little shit. You, you really did that for all for me? He placed a hand on his chest, right where the arc reactor used to be. He felt warmth sweating in his chest at the thought of his intern doing all that, pretending to be sick, just so that he could get out of a very uncomfortable situation. He did it for him. Of course I did, Peter replied. You would have done the same for me. We're in each other's corners, remember? Tony couldn't help but chuckle as he pulled Peter into a hug. Damn right we are, he said. God, kid, you're amazing. It's a gift, Peter said, laughing as he returned the gesture, before they pulled away. So, now that that's settled, Happy began as Tony and Peter pulled away. What are you going to do about my clothes? Relax, Hap. Tony replied, I'll buy you new ones. He then whispered to Peter. Trust me, you killed two birds with one stone big time. I always hated that suit. Peter couldn't help but laugh at his mentor's comment. It was great to see Tony becoming more like himself again, and he had no doubt that they would both get there together. However, there was something he wanted to ask Tony, but that was a conversation for later. Right now, as Tony told Happy, they could enjoy a ride back to the tower and spend the rest of the day together. The original plan when Tony thought that Peter was sick would be to take Peter back to the apartment and leave him rest. However, since Peter wasn't actually sick, the plan changed. Tony decided to have Happy drive them back to the tower so that he and Peter could spend some time in the lab to continue working on the nanotech project. Peppa, May and Happy would have their own gathering in the penthouse. The billionaire still had a difficult time wrapping his mind around the fact that Peter faked being sick just for him. He could have just sat back and let May and Peppa handle it, but he didn't. He rallied Happy and took matters into his own hands. Throughout the interview, Tony wanted nothing more than to just fall through the floor, call upon the suit and fly off, anything to get as far away from Christine Everhart as possible. But even so, everything she said about Peter being kidnapped because he and Tony were close, about the Sokovia Accords and Ultron and Hammer, was true. Disaster always seemed to follow him wherever he went. And yet, people, especially Peter and Peppa, chose to stay. Those thoughts had been circling from when they had returned to the tower. He and Peter immediately got out of their suits and made their way down to the lab. Are you sure you're okay, Mr. Stark? Peter asked he as he and his mentor sat at their station working on the project. The teenager had noticed how quiet Tony got way back on the tower. He tried to ask himself if he was okay, but Tony insisted he was fine. I'm sure, buddy. Thank you. Tony replied with a smile. I would ask you that, but... He winked. I don't have to. Hey, I did it all for you. Peter replied. I know. Tony replied, nodding. Peter's face softened. She had no right to throw all that in your face and attack you like that, he said. You know that, right? The billionaire nodded with a sad smile on his face. Yeah, I... I know, kid, he said. But she was right. I've done some things I'm not proud of. And that includes everything with Hammer and Ultron and Sokovia, the Accords... I'm going to come back to that because there is something that she mentioned that I want to ask you about. Peter gently interjected. Okay, Tony said hesitantly. What is it? Well, why did you create Ultron? Peter asked after a moment of silence. That was not a question Tony was expecting his intern to ask. But it didn't take him long to realise that he had never told Peter the whole story behind Ultron, or why he built the Superbot in the first place. It wasn't because he didn't trust Peter. He trusted Peter very deeply. There was just never a time or a place to talk about it. Until now. 
He was just about to answer when Peter spoke up again. Please don't get mad, Peter said quickly. I'm just... I'm just curious. Because I know you wouldn't create a superbot for anything other than to make the world safer. And it's not like you planned for it to become an evil super robot. So I... I just wanted to know... Why? What... What made you want to build him? Tony exhaled. I guess... I guess I never really gave you all the details, huh? He finally said. Of... Of what happened? I'm not going to think any less of you or want out of this, Peter quickly said. I meant what I said last month. I'm in this for the long haul, no matter what. I'm just curious. I mean, you're an Avenger. You had Captain America, Black Widow, Dr. Banner, Thor and Clint Barton. What happened to make you want to build Ultron? Tony exhaled yet again. He wasn't wild about telling his intern about one of the biggest mistakes of his life, or the full story of his traumatic experience in the first battle with the other Avengers. But Peter deserved to hear the full story. Well, I guess... I guess... You'd better sit down, kid, he finally said, because it's a long story. Peter immediately sat down and leaned on his elbows on the table, ready to listen. Tony chuckled and shook his head at Peter. It started back in 2012, he said, during the attack on New York with Loki and his alien bodies. I... I told you how I flew the nuke into the wormhole, but I never gave you the full details on what I saw. What did you see? Peter asked. I saw... I saw a huge... Huge alien ship, Peter, Tony replied. The Chitauri were just coming out of it, out of this ship, and flying into the wormhole, straight to Earth. I... I couldn't believe my eyes. Someone else, beside Loki, maybe higher than Loki, sent those guys and Loki to come to Earth. So, Loki was working for someone? Peter asked with a raised eyebrow. That's what I think, Tony replied. I didn't have a chance to find out more. Because, well, I was in space. And almost dying. Practically ready to die. And then that, well, you know. I had panic attacks and all that. Peter widened his eyes. From what Tony had always told him about those panic attacks... He always thought it was because his mentor had come so close to death. He never considered the possibility that Tony would see something on the other side. Or that there was something or someone bigger than Loki or the Chitori. I thought it was just because you went into the wormhole, he said. I didn't realise. Well, I didn't know it was because there's something big bad alien who sent an army to New York. Well, it's not something I've always shared with other people, Tony said with a shrug. So this wasn't just some random villain wanting to take over the world, Peter replied. Someone actually set their sights on attacking us. Did Loki ever say who or what sent him? Or why they wanted to attack New York? Not as far as I know, Tony said. Thor took him back to Asgard and... We never really discussed it again after that. Peter nodded, feeling that Tony wasn't done with it yet. I started to get better and tried to push it out of my head. Tony began. I tried to warn the other Avengers, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was overreacting. I guess I got to a point where I thought so too, he sighed. But then... We had a mission to... Attack Hydra base and get the Tesseract, that cube that Logi used, back. And I went in there, and I saw the technology, the ships, everything else these alien guys used to attack us. And then I saw something, almost like a vision. I saw Cap, Natasha, all the Avengers lying on the floor. 
understood. Shit, Peter breathed. Exactly, he said, and I chucked Cap for a pulse. And then he looked right at me and told me that I couldn't save them and asked me why I didn't. Mr. Stark, that, that was just a vision, Peter said. It, it wasn't real. I'm sure Captain America would never say that to you. We had our fair share of saying things that we didn't mean, Tony said, before he sighed again. Anyway, I knew it wasn't real, but then I saw that ship again, and I knew that it was something that could happen. Those aliens in 2012 could come back, and I wanted to be ready. I wanted to come up with a way to protect Earth and give the Avengers a chance to go home after the battle. I saw an armour that could go around the world, and that's when Bruce and I got together and made Ultron. Before we could even use him, he messed with Jarvis and built his own body. Then everything went to shit. You were trying to save everyone, to prevent the aliens from coming back, Peter said. You could never have known he or it, or whatever it was, going to go berserk. And you clearly learned from it, because you made vision after that. I don't see him trying to destroy the human race. Tony stared at Peter for a moment. He remembered how the other Avengers didn't fully believe him. Bruce, even though he had a role in creating Ultron, blamed him for what had happened. But he didn't have the energy to argue with him about it. They didn't even have a chance to argue about it after the battle, since Bruce disappeared after that. Thor attempted to strangle him, and no one stopped him. Pepper and Rhodey were practically the only people who believed him. Until now. His intern believed him. At least he thought he did. He held his breath. You actually believe me? He asked the teenager. I do, Peter asked, quickly nodding. Ah. Why would you make that up? But that's what I was talking about. You had good intentions, Mr. Stark. I mean, okay, yeah, maybe a building a super powerful bot wasn't the best move, but you were trying to help humanity. What's that title? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist, right? Peter chuckled. I appreciate that, Pete, he said with a smile, but still. It led to a lot of destruction, and a lot of people died. He thought back to that woman who confronted him at MIT, the mother who lost her son in Sokovia, and that's on me. But you admitted it, and tried to make up for it, Peter said, and if no one sees it, then... Then screw them! The people who matter know, and that's what's important. Tony's smile widened, feeling the warmth swell inside his chest at how supportive Peter was being. He was right. He did everything in his power to fix his mistake. He did everything he could to protect Peter from Hammer's wrath. He was still to blame for those mistakes, but he did what he could to fix it and would continue to do so. Like Peter said, How did you get to be so wise for your age? He asked. I've had you, May and Ben. Peter replied, I know I probably won't change your mind, but just know that I'm on your side no matter what. I know you do what you do for humanity, and that includes Ultron. And for the mistakes you've made, that's all they are. Mistakes. And you can make up for it. You already do. Thank you, buddy, Tony said before hobbling around the table and putting Peter in for a hug. Thanks, buddy, Tony said before hobbling around the table and pulling Peter in for a hug. He noticed that ever since that night in the medbay, ever since the kidnapping incident, they had been hugging each other more and more. It didn't feel awkward at all, but it felt so much more than wrapping arms around each other, fist bumps, repeating their superhero names and pats on the shoulder. And he loved it. 
Like you said, the people who matter know that. And I think that's good enough for me. Peter closed his eyes as he hugged his mentor tightly in return. Their embraces had just felt like his embraces with Maze and Ben. Warm and safe. It almost broke his heart when they pulled away after a moment. So, do you... Do you know if these aliens will ever come back? He asked. I don't know for sure, Tony replied. But I have a feeling that it's a possibility. And with the Avengers broken up, I don't know how they can be beaten. Or if they can be beaten. It felt so easy to talk to Peter about this. Much easier than when Harley asked him about it that one night in Tennessee. Could it be because Harley was so young at the time and didn't understand? Or maybe it was because he and Peter had more of a connection of some sort. He had no idea. Well, then we'll do it, Peter suddenly said. Tony furrowed his eyebrows together. We? He asked. Yeah, you, Rhodey, Vision and me. He replied firmly. Maybe we can even convince Hawkeye and that guy that made himself big in Germany. But all of us can. When or if that day ever comes, I'm going to be there and help you every step of the way. No, Tony replied simply. Yes, Peter retorted. No, Pete, Tony said firmly. That's not happening. You're way too young for that. And do you remember the attack? Those guys did not play around. I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you during that. Yeah, well, I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you during that while I stood by and did nothing, Mr Stark. Peter replied with an even more firm voice. Peter. No, Mr Stark. Peter interjected quickly. We're a team. Yes, you're my mentor and I'm your intern. But I'm also a superhero just like you. We're in each other's corners, no matter what. I won't let you handle this, whatever it is, whenever it's going to happen. However it's going to happen, on your own. Remember what I said. When you can do things that I can, but don't, those bad things happen. They happen because of you. I will not sit on the sidelines. I will be there with you to tell those aliens off, to fight them. Hell, to flip them off if that's what it takes. You're not alone. No matter what happens, even if we're the last men standing on the battlefield. Tony sighed as he saw Peter was not budging over this one bit. He was unfortunately right. While they were mentor and mentee, they were both also superheroes, as much as he hated to admit it. He, Peter, Rhodey and Vision were the only ones aside from the rogues Bruce, Thor and the Shrinking Man, who could face the aliens head on. Even if he had no real answer as to whether they would come back to Earth, he would need some kind of plan. A team. And who better to have than his intern, who was willing to stand beside him and face what had been haunting him with him. They had gone through being kidnapped together and fought crime together, they trusted each other and protected each other. Their relationship had come a long way since that battle at the airport in Germany. With that, he took a deep breath. You're right, Pete. He said, as much as I hate to admit it, you're right. I should know better than to expect you to stand on the sidelines. And if that does happen, we would need all hands on deck. So, does this mean... It doesn't mean you're an Avenger, but if this does happen, when or if the aliens come back, he took a deep breath. You and I and whatever team we can get, we'll face it together. Yes, Peter said, pumping his fist. But there's going to be some ground rules, Tony began. Mostly you listening to me, staying close and backing out when I say so. There's also going to be some training. We'll need to sharpen our skills because bank robberies and even the vulture will be child play compared to these guys. Got it? Got it, Peter said. And I'll train, I promise. We could train together for all I care. Okay, Tony said, chuckling. All right. 
Well, then, you and I will train together. We can figure out a schedule for you to come to the compound or something. What do you think about that? I like that too, Peter said simply. When can we start? You let me worry about that later, Tony replied. Right now, I think we should finish up on more of the nanotech. And then, maybe, we can get lunch and watch movies upstairs. What do you say? I say that's a great idea, Mr. Stack. Some time later, Tony and Peter decided to take a break and head upstairs to join May, Pepper and Happy for lunch and a movie in the penthouse. When they got off the elevator, both the billionaire and his intern became confused when they saw May, Pepper and Happy gathered around the TV, laughing. Tony and Peter looked at each other with confusion. What's going on? Tony asked aloud, getting everyone's attention. May, Pepper and Happy looked at them with big smiles on their faces, which made Tony and Peter even more confused. Oh, guys, you're going to have to come over here and see this. Pepper said, waving them over. See what, Miss Potts? Peter asked as he walked over with Tony hobbling next to him on his crutches. Your interviews from this morning made headlines, kid. Happy said proudly, everyone's talking about it. Tony sighed as Peter looked at him sadly. He had a feeling that the media was going to pounce on him for walking out on an interview. Of course they would. Uh, look, guys, I I think I'll just... No, Tony, May interjected. Trust us, you're going to want to see this. Both the billionaire and his intern looked at each other in confusion as clips of Christine coming after Tony during his interviews, and then there were some clips of Happy running up to the set, and then Tony leaving to go with Pepper, May and Happy when he thought that Peter was sick, as Christine called after them while the crew quickly cut to a commercial. Then, it cut back to two reporters on a different news channel, and Tony couldn't help brace himself for what they were about to say. Unbelievable, one of the reporters said suddenly. I know, right? The second reporter said, I mean, this man went through a horrific ordeal with his intern and his former rival a month ago, and you choose now to come after him with his past and essentially blame him for this ordeal? That's not fair, and just utterly appalling. Tony's eyes widened even more. From what it sounded like, these reporters were berating Christine for what happened during the interview. He managed a small smile. It's the textbook definition of victim blaming, the first reporter said. Since when was Tony Stark responsible for the actions of his rival Justin Hammer? I'm telling you, the second reporter said. Whatever deity or religion or whatever you believe in, you can't deny that it was divine intervention when his intern got sick. Wasn't it so sweet seeing how he practically jumped off the stage to tend to Peter? Oh, the first reporter said, putting a hand on her chest with a smile. It was so sweet. You know, we don't know much about this Peter Parker, but you can definitely tell that he and Tony Stark care about each other. Absolutely, the second reporter said. Before anyone could say anything else, Happy quickly turned the TV off, looking at Tony and Peter with a smile. Practically every reporter has been saying the same thing the whole afternoon, he said. Are you serious? Peter asked excitedly. Very serious, Pepper said with a smile of her own. People saw the truth today, and as far as they're concerned, Christine was the one in the wrong today, which is completely true. Peter beamed from ear to ear, looking at Pepper and then at his mentor. Isn't that great, Mr. Stark? He said, it totally backfired on her. Tony chuckled. Yeah, good. He said, wrapping an arm around Peter. It is. He then looked at his fiance. So what happens now? Well, we can worry about that tomorrow. Pepper said, still smiling. For now, I think you two need to take it easy for the rest of the day. You both earned it after this morning. Tony and Peter were more than happy to take it easy for the rest of the day, as Pepper told them. They both silently agreed that it was best to keep their conversation in the lab a secret, especially when there was no evidence of an impeding alien attack any time soon. Instead, they decided to just relax for the rest of the day, with lunch, dinner, more lab time, to allow Peter to catch up on work that he missed at school. And finally, a movie with May, Pepper and Happy. Before they agreed to go home. 
They agreed on a Star Wars movie, of course, and Tony did the honours and pressed play without any hesitation, as Peter sat next to him on the couch, with May on the other side, while Peppa sat on Tony's left and Happy sat in a chair. After about two hours, the credits rolled on the screen, ending the movie. When no one appeared to stop the movie, May, Peppa and Happy looked at Tony, who was holding the remote, and what they saw made him smile. Well, look at that, Happy said fondly. There were Peter and Tony, sound asleep on the couch, with Peter resting his head on Tony's shoulder, and Tony's arm wrapped around Peter's shoulders. That's just too cute, Peppa said as she quickly grabbed her phone and snapped a picture. I think maybe you and Peter best stay for the night, May. Oh, uh, uh, are you sure, Peppa? May asked. I wouldn't want to impose. It's no problem at all, really, Peppa said. You can take the guest room. There are toiletries and such. Tony made sure that room is always fully stocked for Peter. I have no doubt about that, May said with a fond smile. All right, I guess one night wouldn't hurt. I'd hate the idea of having to wake them up. So, as Happy said his goodbyes, and Pepper and May placed a blanket on Tony and Peter, who did not move once. Good night, guys, May and Pepper said in unison, before Pepper asked Friday to turn off the lights and head to bed themselves. It was going to be a long road, but no matter what, Tony and Peter were going to get through it, together with their loved ones. Tony slowly opened his eyes as he came out of his slumber. Thankfully, the room was dark, so he was able to take his time in taking in his surroundings. He wasn't fully aware of where he was, but he could tell that he was going to be sore in the morning because of the slight pain in his back. However, he didn't pay much attention to it because he felt something leaning against his chest. He reached up to rub his eyes to clear the fog and then looked down, only to see that it was Peter. And then he noticed that both he and Peter were under a blanket, that he did not remember having over them when the movie started. However, he couldn't help but smile at hearing the light snoring from the teenager. He lightly patted Peter's shoulder before he lightly shook it. Hey kid, wake up, he said. Peter... Peter shifted slightly from where he slept and opened his eyes, rubbing them. He then blinked to get the sleep out of his eyes, and it wasn't long before he realised that he was lying on something or someone. He looked up and saw Tony smiling at him, and he wasted no time in sitting up, realising that he had fell asleep on his mentor. Oh, sorry, Mr. Stark, he said. I guess I dozed off. Don't worry, kid. I did too. Tony said as he sat up further. Peter smiled slightly, trying to hide his embarrassment, and looked around only to see that they were still in Tony's living room, and that it was dark, empty, aside from the two of them. May, Peppa and Happy were nowhere to be seen. Where is everyone? he asked aloud. Not sure, Tony said. Friday? Miss Potts and Miss Parker have retired for the night. The AI replied, Mr. Hogan returned home. Oh, why didn't they wake us up? Peter asked curiously. He looked at the clock under the television and saw that it was 1am. They were asleep for a couple of hours at least. Peter remembered Tony playing the movie, but not too much after that. Why did May, Pepper and Happy leave them on the couch? Did May head home without waking them up? Miss Potts and Miss Parker decided to let you two both sleep. Friday replied before Tony could answer. Miss Potts opened the invitation for you and Mrs. Parker to stay in the penthouse for the night. Huh, well, I guess we're having an impromptu sleepover tonight, good. Tony said before he stood up and stretched out his back. Peter couldn't help but chuckle as he stood up as well. Yeah, guess so. Peter said, the only problem is... I... He scratched the back of his neck awkwardly. 
I don't have any pyjamas or clothes for the next day. Thankfully, he had his backpack and school supplies with him, so that was one less thing to worry about. He wouldn't have minded if he had to sleep in his clothes, but considering he had to get to school the next day, and that the original plan was for him and May to go home, he didn't feel like sleeping in his regular clothes. Tony took another look at Peter and realised that he had a point. It wouldn't be fair to make the teen sleep in his clothes and then head off to school the next day. Well, we can't do anything about your clothes for school until tomorrow, he began after a minute, but I can help you out with the pyjamas. Follow me, you can borrow mine. He nodded forward with his head, urging Peter to follow him. Oh, really? Peter asked with widened eyes. Ah, uh, are you sure? I, I wasn't trying to. Yes, Pete, I'm sure, Tony said with a smile. You need something comfy to sleep in, so that's what we'll get you. Remember, in, e in each other's corners. Peter couldn't help but smile and nod before Tony led him towards his and Peppa's room. He waited outside the doorway while Tony went inside the dark room to get him some pyjamas. It wasn't long before Tony came out of the room again with a t-shirt and flannel pants. Here you are, good. He said as he gave him them to Peter. Thanks, Mr. Stark. Peter said as he took them with a little smile. You didn't have to. I know, Tony replied, but I want to. Besides, you need something to sleep in. Besides, like I told you, I got some pull in case you need a little inspiration in what, what deciding what college to go to. Peter fired his eyebrows together and rolled his eyes. I'll see you in the morning, Mr. Stark, he said. Tony nodded. Absolutely, he said. We'll get you back home to the apartment tomorrow to get ready for school. Sounds good to me, Peter said, nodding. Good night, Mr. Stark. Good night, Peter, Tony replied. Tony and Peter both went to their respective rooms for the night. And once Peter was in the guest room, he was able to see that May was asleep on a cot near the bed. He couldn't help but feel bad that she didn't take the bed, but decided it wasn't worth it. He went into the bathroom to change, and as soon as he turned the bathroom light on, he saw three faded letters on the t-shirt. M.I.T. He chuckled again and shook his head before he changed out of his clothes and into the pyjamas. And as soon as he brushed his teeth, he climbed into bed and fell fast asleep. Knowing that he and Tony were in each other's corners, and that they made a promise to fight those aliens together, if or when that happened, allowed both Mentor and Mentee to stay asleep without any nightmares for the first time in weeks. End of story. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that. Oh my god, I love that. That was lovely. And I hope you guys enjoyed that story too. I'm sorry if there have been a few uploading issues which caused viewership to go down. What can you do? I'm not a perfect person. But I'm glad you enjoyed it again. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.